trust you and we honor you and we bless you, Lord God, and thank you in advance for an empowering, uplifting, and supernaturally edifying discussion. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's jump right into it. Matthew chapter 9, starting with verse 35. This is our uh, focal text, and then we'll hang our hat on verse 37. And it says here, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. It says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. I'll say that again, verse 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, verse 38, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And so I want to start with the thought that God gave me, which was uh, the impetus for this particular interview. Uh, after watching uh, my brother, uh, Prophet Nick, deliver a word uh, this past Sunday, that dealt with the, what it meant to be a laborer um, and the difference between being just a worker or a laborer um, and, you know, sort of the difference between having a mindset of churchianity rather than a mindset of the kingdom. Um, something hit me and it, it, it came as I began to chew on verse 37 where, where Jesus said that the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. And I thought to myself, I said, man, this is kind of a paradigm shift in the way that you think about this verse. Because essentially, Jesus is saying that if we are not seeing a consistent flow of souls coming into the kingdom, right? And if we are not seeing lives changed, transformed, and delivered in the way that we see in scripture as the uh, uh, apostles went forward doing Christ-like ministry. If we're not seeing the fruit uh, that we see in the book of Acts uh, that, that, that flows from spirit-led action, uh, then we cannot blame culture, we cannot blame church people, um, and, and, and we certainly cannot look at God as though there's something wrong with what he's doing because Jesus has already told us the state of affairs from heaven's viewpoint. He told us that the harvest truly is plentiful. And I know that that instruction is not simply uh, meant for the people who were listening to him in those ancient times. That was the indicator of what season we are in from that point where the word came forth, even until now, until the second coming of Christ. The harvest truly is plentiful. The issue is that the laborers are few. So if we are not seeing those souls come in, and if we are not seeing those lives changed and transformed in the way that it ought through kingdom ministry, then we need not question anything else but whether or not we truly are laborers. So I said, let me bring my brother on to Napalm Springs because this is what we're all about. We're all about delivering the, the uncut word of God designed to bring people into supernatural encounter with the risen Christ by the spirit of God so that they can then be sent out to do the work of spirit-led kingdom, life-changing, earth-shaking ministry in Jesus' name. We foretell of future events and we foretell the mind of God and the heart of God at the behest and empowerment of the spirit of God. And so uh, I, I don't know that there are many more people who are as qualified as my friend to deliver the word that God had given him in the first place. So I wanted to offer this platform so that the audience that God has assigned to, uh, uh, to not only to Napalm Springs, but also to Kingdom Heritage Ministries can be exposed to this impactful word. So my brother, go ahead and get into it. Let's start with the why. Why, why should we be considering this question in the first place? I mean, 
we got tons of churches. We got, you know, revivals and crusades going on. It seems that, you know, souls are, are, are being saved um, to the naked eye in, in some way. Uh, although, you know, we could talk about the quality or the authenticity um, uh, of those conversions um, at another time. But it would appear to us that the church has a decent grip on uh, what needs to be done on a daily basis in order to present the gospel and cause people to respond in some way. Uh, but why is it important to really look at this concept of laboring in Christ's definition of it uh, as opposed to the way that it's commonly understood? Why take the time to break this type of thing down? Well, there's, there's a very big, there's a need there. Okay. There's a very strong need there because if you look at it, it's almost, we've, we've heard messages about people discussing hirelings versus shepherds. Right. They say, oh, well, you know, the shepherd has a different mentality versus the hireling who will not protect the flock. And we see messages shaped around that. But when we start looking at the overall body uh, from a macro perspective, so many, we have so many people that are working in the vineyard. Right. But, but they're not necessarily laboring in the vineyard. Okay. Because and here's why. And here's you want an example of this parable about the eleventh hour, where you have uh, Jesus going out to get all these people. He's giving the parable of all. Hey, master went out and hired all these people for the same for this wage, and then people came in at the very last minute, and he paid them all the same thing. And then there was someone that complained and said, "Hey, wait a minute! I've been here longer than this person. Why? Well, how can they get paid the same thing?" And he said, "What is it to you that I paid them the same thing? Didn't you? Did you not agree to this?" Right. You know, and, and what we have is we have a, a body full of people who are working a court, uh, working based on conditions. OK, wow. They're, they're conditional workers and, they, and also they're entitled. I see. But, you know, and it's, there's many people that are entitled and it's and it, without realizing it, because they're being taught messages from pulpits that say you, you should have this and you're supposed to have that. and You're supposed to be this. These things are very true. But what also can be fostered is a conditionality, a conditioning of the mind to to uh, to place conditions and limitations on how you're willing to serve. Right. How, and, and what you're willing to do. Whereas what, what Jesus Jesus was exhausted. His his cousin died. Yeah. You know, he just uh, be, his cousin was just beheaded. He didn't right. have time to grieve because right. he was a laborer and he understood that because his heart was moved with compassion that I've got to go and these people need something. These people are broken. These people are hungry. These people are hurting. These people need the care. Right. They right. need to understand who they are so they can understand the father's sufficiency and they, they can really understand that I am the doorway to teach them how to step into everlasting, but also how to access everlasting and bring it here upon the earth. Right. Right. You no. Know? So, so well, let me ask you this. What is a laborer? What <laughs> is a laborer? When Christ said that the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. What did he mean when he used the word laborer? Now, it's, it's very interesting because when you look at the word laborer, the word laborer in itself, when you really break that down, what he's saying is he's talking about a toiler. OK, you know, he's talking and what a toiler is. A toiler is a person uh, that works without limitation or restriction. Wow. OK, so they're one who do, they're, they're not making up excuses but what they're, they're too busy focused on the reality of what is before them to make an excuse for what is around them. Wow. Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> My goodness. You know, they're, 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 they're too focused on the reality that's before them to make excuses for the conditions that are around them. Wow. OK. You know, I, I don't have this and I, I don't have that. and I, I wish this was better. And I, when, when, I, when I get paid more money, I'll do this. And when I have a spouse, finally, and God sends me that one, I'll, I'll finally step out here. Or, or I got to take care of this person or I have children or I have this and I have that. Yes, you have these these things that are in your life. And these are conditions that are in your life. And it can feel like it's your reality. But in actuality, your reality is what God has said, because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So therefore, Amen. your 
your reality and your life is based on what he has spoken to you, whether it's written, because what was written was actually spoken before it was written. And so, wow. when you, whether, so therefore, when you understand that the written word was actually a spoken word before it was a written word, then you understand that everything is being spoken. And then you know that, okay, God, these promises that you've made to me, that's my reality. So therefore, everything else that's in my life now, I have to view through the lens of my reality. Yes. And I, which means that I no longer look at my conditions as limitations, but I look at my conditions as opportunities to serve you. But I don't get it. I mean, if, I'm just thinking from the perspective of a person. I mean, I get it, right? But I, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of the average believer who they they go to church or, in, or, or are involved in some level of ministry, whether it is giving um, uh, to their local church or attending or uh, 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 um, participating online mm -hmm. or even those who uh, serve in, in some level or form of ministry, uh, whether they visit hospitals or they knock on doors or they're doing uh, charity work and homeless outreach, things like that. Isn't that uh, the type of laborer that the Lord was speaking of? Like on its face, doesn't that check the box? of being a laborer as Christ uh, intended? Well, here's the, here's the reality. People can visit the sick and people can go to nursing homes and their heart posture is not right. Okay. They're going because the pastor wants them to go. They're going because it's the right thing to do. The Pharisees knew what the right thing to do was, but right. it doesn't mean that their heart posture was correct. Right. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So a laborer is a heart first believer. Yes. You know, so therefore, they, they one, their heart posture is like, I'm doing this because, and, and truth is the anchor in the foundation of why they're doing what they're doing. Love is the foundation. God's principles and uh, it's, it, the unction of the Holy Spirit is, is the foundation of why they do what they do. Because they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So therefore, th that is why they do what they do, because it's coming from the heart. And because it's coming from the heart, also there's going to be fruit in their life. So one thing that distinguishes a laborer from a worker is that a, a, a laborer will have fruit. Yes. You know, a fruit that also can be multiplied, replicated, and you'll see expansion of the fruit. It's not something that's only uh, seasonal. It's yes. Not, it's, it's not seasonal. It's not conditional fruit. It's something that keeps on replicating and going and going because there's a seed inside of that fruit. Whereas a, a worker is someone who will gather things for themselves, but they never understand the, the reality of how to bury the seed so that it can multiply, germinate, and begin to grow. And also a worker is not willing to die because a seed must first die, as our Lord said. A seed must die first before I want the report explode. Okay, I want you to, to continue down this path path of the the replication okay and the reproduction very important in terms of distinguishing um uh, uh the person who does activity right but but does not carry the full identity of a laborer as christ intended with the empowerment of the spirit uh, i want you to um to, to come back to that place but just for a second i want to touch on that point that you said when you mentioned the pharisees mm -hmm. because jesus said to his disciples, do what they say, but do not do as they do, right? Because what makes you who you are to God, what gives you your identity in God's sight, is not just what you do, it's why you do it and how you do it. And I've said this before, anybody can claim to do things for God. God used a donkey to do something for him. Yes. Right. When that donkey obstructed the rebellious path of Balaam. As he stopped him from going down the road and eventually crushed his ankle because he saw an angel standing in front of him that Balaam could not see mm -hmm. and even spoke to Balaam. So we know that God used that donkey to do something for him. But that didn't make that donkey. An inheritor or recipient of salvation or of kingdom fellowship. You understand? That has been reserved for human beings. And yet there are so many of us that have not seized the opportunity to be unto God what we are truly called to be unto him. Yes. We stomp at the donkey level, Lord have mercy, Come due on, to ignorance. 
doing things for God yeah. and cheering each other on and receiving honor from man when we have, in God's sight, missed the mark. Why? Yeah. Because while anybody can claim to do something for God and anyone can be used to do something for God, believers have the privilege of doing, doing things with God. We work with God, right? We, yes. we, we, yes. Are, we are uh, partakers of the divine nature. We are participants in his glorious self-revelation, right? So we, we, we operate in a cooperative, synergetic uh, uh, posture and relationship with the Holy Spirit before God in accomplishing his labor. And so when we do that, what we will find naturally is that because we carry the Father's seed, hallelujah, yeah. within us, and we are consistently planting and sowing, we will find reproduction. Yes. And I believe that that reproduction, and I'll let uh, uh, Prophet Nick continue, but that, that reproduction is uh, multidimensional. So, uh, Nick, what does that reproduction look like if, in fact, and when we are true laborers? Well, one, one of the uh, key signs, uh, signs of a true laborer also is you have the ability to teach. You have the ability to teach and you, you have the ability to be able to say, not only have I received, but what, what, what did Jesus say? Freely as you have received, freely you give. Yeah. Amen. And so therefore, you have to have the ability. One, a sign of a laborer is one who understands how to teach and they teach without restriction. They do not withhold certain revelation or certain understanding from, from a certain people because you know, of favoritism or, or whatever it may be. They are giving yes. and, re and, and releasing the revelatory understanding, which is actually the illumination of God to light the pathway of men to understand the way in which they are to go. And so therefore, the teaching actually prospers those who they, they go before uh, it's, it's very key to understand that because that is something that is actually uh, missing a lot is that you have people going to church and they receive a a two-point message you yeah. know and, yeah. and it's like i have two points but you spent 40 45 minutes talking about everything else but the two points you know and, it's like, and, and people are, are 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 learning how to be workers not because some many of them it's not because their heart posture is to be a worker right but because right. they're not being taught how to be a laborer and wow. so therefore, they, they don't know. So my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So knowledge, knowledge is your spiritual repository. OK, so, so knowledge is your storehouse. So yes. knowledge is like, OK, I received wisdom. I received understanding. Knowledge is where it's actually stored so that it can become your identity. So then you could begin to replicate and duplicate that which is being you know within you externally. So talk about. Talk of, and, and this is why I believe um, people have, have found their way to this broadcast. It's because our understanding of knowledge, I believe, is simply the ledger of what we know uh, on a human level. We, right, we, we, we hear that word knowledge and, and we think that it means anything that we can draw from reading a, a book, whether it's sacred or secular. Anything that we can receive by sitting in a classroom or getting a degree. But Biblically, when the Bible is talking about knowledge, and, and, and again, for those just tuning in, we're talking about what it means to be a true laborer as uh, Christ would define it. Um, because we see in Matthew 9, uh, 37, that he says the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so um, Prophet Nick is, is talking about not only what it looks like to be a true laborer, what it takes to be a true laborer. Um, and he's also discussing, right, the, the, the elements of truth um, and, and, and of power and of authority uh, that we have to regularly flow in in order to perform the, the labor that the Lord has assigned us to perform. Um, and so we're, we're talking about this knowledge piece. And so, uh, Prophet, please talk to us about the, the, the need for knowledge the way that God would have us to, to receive knowledge and the type of knowledge that we're to have, particularly 
revelatory knowledge. Oh, my, my. So this is, first of all, we have to have to start off with a particular scripture. I only want to use part of this verse to begin with, but it says God is a spirit. Right. Okay. So when we understand that, and you just referenced earlier that we're with working with God, we're, right. we're laboring with God. Right. So if we're laboring with God, where do we need to begin to where do we need to begin to understand and get and walk with not as far as this knowledge we're receiving, right. the reality that we're perceiving? Where does it have to be? It has to be in the realm of the spirit. That's right. John four, by the way, God's yes. spirit. It has to be. It has to be by the spirit and in the spirit. And so right. when we understand that, it has to be in the spirit. So therefore, the knowledge that we walk in is in the spirit. The harvest that we perceive is, is in the spirit. It is through the spirit, in the spirit. That's why the spirit guides us to all truth. Right. And so therefore, we it, it's, it's all in this realm of the spirit. And we have to then be, begin to understand how to draw from the realm of the spirit and bring it into the natural. So to go to your uh, what you were speaking of, the Holy Spirit is the one who begins to move within us. And the first thing you have to actually do, and we would have to go to Proverbs on that. Proverbs chapter eight, I believe it's maybe eight, five. Uh -huh. uh, I could be wrong about that. But yeah, I believe it's Proverbs eight, five, where he, yeah, he, he starts talking about get wisdom. Get yes. understanding. You have to have them first because the, the 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 conceived seed from wisdom and understanding is knowledge. Say it again. The conceived seed from wisdom and understanding is actually knowledge. Wow. Okay. So so when so when you actually begin to understand, receive the wisdom, you also receive prudence because the scripture also says in Proverbs that I prudence dwell with wisdom. So therefore, and prudence is actually the ability to make the right decision at the right time, utilizing the resources that have been given to you by God in that moment. Yes. And okay. so therefore, so you get the wisdom and the prudence together with the understanding. Now, understanding says, I am the multi the streams. You know, if, if wisdom is the river of this is the water, understanding is, is the actual streamlines that are flowing out to, to water to, 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 to replenish the earth. Right. And, and so we begin to understand that it leaves us in the application. Now, where does all that water go? The water must go into a place where a repository where that water can begin to go to, to begin to sit. And you begin to see that a, a lot of times with lakes and rivers that lead to lakes and all these things like that. And so you look at it and say, OK, well, I have to have a place for this to be stored. That's what knowledge is. So That's knowledge right. is that conceived that, that conceived seed or that conceived child that uh, from, from that is birthed from wisdom and understanding coming together that's why it says get wisdom get understanding you have to get them together because without one you don't have the application that you need to be able to go forth to apply the truth which you have perceived so 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 in other words the bar is being raised yes for what knowledge truly is yes and, and i just want those who are listening you see it is the job of prophets and apostles to 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 pull you into the fullness of your identity in Christ. Because, listen, you can sit under so-called Christian teaching your whole life and never truly be challenged to become all that you were called to be. Yes. And that's and again, that does not mean that that you have not made sincere efforts. It just means you were brought here for such a time as this. There is another level. There is a uh, uh, another dimension that God wants to bring you into and God has uh, appointed apostles and prophets with a breakthrough anointing yes right to break down to shut down dismantle every barrier that would hinder you from walking in the fullness of maturation and manifestation so that you can manifest the glory that Jesus bled and died and resurrected for you to walk in. And so it's necessary to understand that there will be times where all that you feel like you've gained, you'll realize, you know what? Maybe I don't know what I thought I knew. And if you just listen to the definition that my brother's given, which is totally biblical, if you read Proverbs, you'll just see that when the Bible talks about knowledge and all that it entails, and when you look at the, the uh, blueprint that Jesus gave us, so, so, so much so where, where he says in, in John 4, 24, as my brother said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
So if you would claim, for example, to have knowledge and yet you have not fully received the infilling and empowerment and baptism of the Holy Ghost, then it doesn't matter how long you've been singing hymns and reciting scriptures and doing good works. The Lord says that you don't have what you think you have. And so it would behoove you to go back to basics, to go to square one, to repent and to receive from the ground up, brick by brick, the truth in a repentant posture that truly sets men free. And so it's moments like this where it can be offensive to the natural mind and to the carnal heart to suggest that you might not have the knowledge you think you have. Because knowledge is meant to be experiential and not experiential in that, right? You have followed step one, step two. Knowledge means that you have experienced God in a manner that has marked you with an understanding that has been availed to you by an impartation of supernatural wisdom, right? And the, 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 the interplay of that wisdom and understanding, my brother says, produces the seed of knowledge, what God considers knowledge. I mean, it's really beautiful. You know, when you've been broken and you've been humbled by the spirit of God and, 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 you've, and you have walked with, with, with the risen Lord for long enough, you revel in these types of moments. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I regularly come to God and say, Lord, everything I think I know, I lay, I lay it at your feet. Right. It, it's it's like, you know, you can think you have pure gold until that thing gets refined again and more purities come out. And then when you get back, you realize, wow, now look at this. And he talks about heaven and how the, the, the streets are the purest of pure gold so much so that it's clear right now. That's I don't think any of us have reached that level yet. And so we should we should have this brokenness before. And there's a verse uh, uh, where Jesus says, you know, that. Those who are wicked in heart, they, they stay away from the light because they don't want to be exposed, right? They, they, moments like this make them so uncomfortable because of that pride within their heart. They don't want to be exposed for being the blind and, and, and naked church that they actually are, as the Lord said to Laodicea. But, but those who, who, who truly love God and love the truth, Right? They come to the light. Those who truly want to know him as he is yes. and won't settle for anything else. Hallelujah. They will lay aside every weight that so easily besets them. They, they want to get uh, uh, exposed if that's what it takes. And so the Bible says they will come to the light so that it can be proven that their works have been of God. And so that's what I want you to, to rest on. That the bar is higher than what we could imagine. But guess what? The glory is greater. The grace is more abundant than we ever could have imagined. Because the Lord never calls us to something that he will not empower us to attain. The grace is here. The anointing is here. Let's just thank God for a moment. Lord, thank you that the grace is here. The anointing is here to escort us into not only receiving, but manifesting, oh God, in, in, in essence, incubating and giving full birth to the fruit of all that's being sown in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor you. My brother, continue, continue. It, there was so much in, in, in what was, uh, what you said, but it's, 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 you know, we they have to be baptized in in the Holy Spirit. You know, as you were saying, that is, that is a very key aspect. So but we're getting into the how now, right? Yes. Like, how can a person who's listening they say, you know, I want to be a laborer, a true laborer? Okay, yes. uh, how do I do that? Yeah, and that that is a very big key. What you were saying, first of all, baptism in the Holy Spirit is very key. The other part of it you hit on as well is your heart posture. Because here's the thing: you have a lot of people who can, can, can pray, uh, they can pray and, and uh, the Holy, Holy Ghost, they prophesy, they give you a word of knowledge, word, you know, a word of wisdom, uh, you know, healing miracles, all these things are happening and they're, and they're equating that to, I'm a laborer because these things are happening. 
Right. And it's like, no, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. God is a spirit that it worship him it must worship him in spirit and in truth. But hold on. Not just being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Only the pure at heart shall see God. Okay. Okay. So, so if you are a true laborer, you have to also perceive your harvest. My God. Because by the spirit. A, a, Elijah told Elisha, you asked a hard thing when you asked for a double portion. He said, you asked a hard thing. But if you see me. Right. Getting taken up. Right. He was, being, he was being taken up in the realm of the spirit. It wasn't right. just a natural thing. That, uh, people think, oh, it was a natural thing. And all these cha people, the chairs appeared and all those things happened. No, this was a spiritual occurrence that happened where that where that, fi that flaming fire that came down. The whirlwind came, boom, and came down that way. And Elisha saw it in the realm of the spirit. And what was naturally what was naturally available as well for others to see was the mantle, which was why that was documented in the scriptures. So therefore, what happened in the spirit realm, uh, Elisha perceived it, but the other people were able to, to see the mantle that fell and, and, wow. and, and the anointing that was there. And they saw that when he used that same mantle, that physical manifestation of what he saw spiritually happen, then when he struck it, then they said, whoa, it's upon him now. But it came upon him when he saw it. Right. He right. saw his harvest. And in order to be able to see it, it requires that you be pure in heart. Yes. And so that brings you to another uh, element of the how. Because you can be baptized in the spirit, and yet, if you are not careful to guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life, right, you, you can literal, literally uh, delay your own harvest. Go, go ahead and talk about the purity of heart peace. Now, now wait, we see you're going right into where we're going. This is exactly where yep. we're going. Because, see, that whole aspect, when Elisha saw him get take, uh, Elijah get taken... He he immediately entered into becoming a laborer. Before that, <laughs> before that, here's the thing: he was actually being tested before that because yeah. he was everywhere. Elijah would say, "Stay here." No, no, I'm going with you. Right. And he kept serving and serving without restriction, without limitation, regardless Jesus. of the conditions that he experienced while Lord he was Amber. serving. Regardless yeah. of the people, man, he had to serve whatever Woo! he was said to him, whatever was done around him. All the other prophets and people that were in a prophetic school that were saying, Elisha, what are you doing? You know, all these people that could have been ridiculing him, the people that didn't like Elijah and all the stuff Elijah was going through. He also went through that with him. He wasn't by himself. He went through it with Elijah and said, hey, hold on, I'm with you right now. I'm with you in all this. I'm sticking beside you. Where you go, I go, and so therefore he he endured the same hardships with them. Part he was he helped to bear the infirmities. You know, like I said, a strong heart to bear the infirmities of the weak, but he helped to bear his infirmities through his service. And so he didn't have a restriction on his his heart posture to say, "I'm going to serve you." When that mantle passed over him, he cut up them oxen. He, he presented an offering. He said goodbye to his family, and he left. And from that point, he served wholeheartedly without restriction. There are seasons of your life you're going to go through where God's going to have you doing things that's not going to make sense to you, but you got to keep going all the way through it. And you're going to go through some Come things. On, man. He's going to tell you to say certain things. He's going to tell you to go certain places. Sometimes you might not even look like, oh gosh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing something that might embarrass me or uh, my family may not like what I'm doing or how can I explain what I'm in right now? This don't make any sense to me. It don't make sense to other people, but you got to keep serving him the way he's called you to serve him. You might have to work a job that you don't want to work, but you got to work there for the season because that is the vineyard he has you in for the time being because what he's also seeing is many are called, but few are chosen which That's means right. to be selected and so you have to be selected to be able to enter into the fullness of the harvest that you actually have called to and so out of all those prophets Elisha was selected because he continued to be faithful all the way until the end my God. And, and so God will call you in, into seasons where you have to serve, but you have to. He's removing all your restrictions. He's removing all your I can'ts. I, I cannot and I can't. He's removing all the I don'ts and I won'ts and I will not. He's he's removing all those things off of you so that when you actually enter into the harvest, he can tell you to do something and he can move with you because your faith won't restrict his ability. Amen. Listen real quick. So would you say that it's safe to say that labor, to be a true laborer, it by nature requires a season where you're being prepared to operate at that level? Yes. Right? So laboring is Christ declared. Laboring is a level. And it requires that you go through a season or as you sort of ascend up levels of uh, laboring ministry, if you will, 
it requires seasons and uh, and uh, uh, periods of your life where you are being tested at different levels. Yes. As you go up levels in, in the uh, efficiency and the effectiveness of your laboring, it requires these seasons so that your heart can be purified, mm -hmm. made worthy and ready mm -hmm. to handle the ministry of laboring yes. in Christ's harvest. Because, and, and let me just say that as well. When we talk about harvest, see all the time when we talk about harvest, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's spoken of as your harvest. Jesus, we are, we are, we, Lord, set the captives free. Oftentimes, we, 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 we make, you talked about macro and micro, right? Yeah. Oftentimes, harvest is only spoken of on a micro level, where it's about you receiving your harvest, you receiving your personal promised land. But, and I believe, I honestly believe this is where Israel, one of the, one of the points at which they, they truly failed. Um, and it was designed to be as such because, you know, the Lord allowed both Gentiles and Jews to fall short so that he would have mercy on all the Bible says in Romans. But they, they did not have a vision for the macro level blessing that they were meant to be to the world. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And so they, 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 they didn't have a vision that, that, that showed them what awaited them. You talk about being able to see your harvest. I don't believe they could see the harvest. And God raised the prophets to try to point them to the harvest and what it truly was and what it meant. This is why, you know, David even said in Psalm, I believe it's 40, where he was like, sacrifices and all. Oh, no, this is um, uh, um, uh, Psalm 51. Uh, sacrifices and offering you haven't desired, but a broken and contrite heart is what you desire. It's also repeated in uh, uh, Psalm 40, this notion that even while they were performing the sacrifices that the Lord had required of them through the mouth of Moses and the law, the Lord was saying, this is just meant to bring you to a place of proximity with me where you realize you're going to need something more to access me on the level that I'm offering myself mm -hmm. and to become who you are truly meant to be. It is to bring them to a, a broken and contrite place of repentance where they recognize their need for a Messiah. Because that is what would have allowed them to see the harvest and not to get to the point where they were literally using those codes and those laws to justify their own wicked behavior, to believe that as long as I killed this animal, it doesn't matter that I killed a person yesterday, right? That is, as, as long as I uh, 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 like this incense, it doesn't matter that I, that I gave a, 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 a burnt offering to a pagan demon god, right? They, they fail to see the harvest because of the impurity of their heart. And so what God wants us to understand is that harvest as the church must come to know it in this day and time is bigger than just you getting what you have been praying for, for you and your loved ones and your friends and your little circle, us four and no more. We have got to begin living and laboring for a harvest that is global. We have to begin laboring and crying out and serving in a way and on a level that begins to rock the heavens so that people's lives can be transformed in supernatural ways all over the world all throughout our community, all throughout our nation, all throughout our state on a regular basis that we would become cogs in a factory of heaven coming to earth on a daily basis through our heart posture, hallelujah, and our alignment and working with, our dancing with the Lord Jesus and his kingdom ministry as led by the spirit on a daily basis.
with every breath, every prayer, every move, every witness, every word, every lesson, we have got to be working to bring in a kingdom harvest rather than just a personal harvest in Jesus' name. But I, I, wanted, I want you to just touch on with the, the time we have remaining because I, I have to be, be mindful of the fact that people's attention spans are only so long. So we might need to just have a part two uh, with all of this amazing stuff that's, that's being released. I, I, want, I want to, we talk about God never calling us to something that he doesn't empower us to receive. I, I want you to begin to prophesy, okay? Begin to, to release what God has put in you over the lives of the people who are watching this broadcast. Because, again, with the apostolic and the prophetic, sometimes it can seem like a hard word, but that's only because there's great grace that comes with it to bring you into the reality and realization of that word and to break down and through any barriers that would hinder you from manifesting the fullness of that word. And so even now, there is fresh oil. There is fresh oil for the harvest with your name on it. And so what I'm going to do, and I can sense that it's going to be a ping pong here. I want you to prophesy, my brother, over the lives of these men, these women, these boys, these girls who are watching this. And then we are going to pray and release over these uh, individuals that oil and that grace. And uh, I'm going to also minister as the Lord leads. But go for it, my friend. Well, there's. Hmm. That, can I say something before we, before we please say, go ahead? Close it because, out as you want to close there, out. Yeah, your because flow. there's a there's a something that definitely to to connect this because it, there what's happening in the body as well is that there uh, there's a lot of there are many that are experiencing delay. Okay. Uh, they're experiencing like it's like well why why hasn't my blessing come or because see the, what people felt a lot of people do not realize is the prophetic word itself is a seed. Yes. And the scripture says that I believe it's Genesis 822 or it's uh was it's, yeah, I believe it's in Genesis chapter eight. But it says bottom line is always gonna be seed time, harvest time. Uh oh. and so what we have to understand, that's what my home side, because I make sure I'm right about that, because yeah, Genesis 8 22. So it's oh. always gonna be seed time and harvest time. And so therefore we have to understand the prophetic word itself is a seed. And mm. and because it is a seed. The harvest, the harvest time is the manifestation of that word. But when God and you just hit on it, when God does, it does bring forth the manifestation. It's not just for you. It's actually for the glorification of the kingdom and right. for you to begin to teach and be able to testify, begin to share so that others can begin to enter into this. And God can begin to because the testimony we know it. We heard it said before, do it again, God. And right. so God and God is very much interested in doing it again in someone else's life. Right. And and so what's been happening in the body is we have so many in the body that do not uh, they lack the resources and right. part of it is because they haven't been a laborer so they've been God's giving them a word you're going to be this I'm going to do this in your life I'm going to do this with your church I'm going to do this with your community I'm going to do this with your family and they're like where's the word where's the word but then there's a lack of they have not been laboring. And to, to actually move in that direct meaning that they have restrictions on their heart. And you hit it earlier. God was speaking through you. Holy Spirit was speaking through you. The restrictions on their heart, things they will not let go from their heart, things that they're still holding on to from the past, regrets and anger and all these things that are still holding on to. Some people you're dealing with inferiority as well. You're dealing with this. Yes. You don't feel like you're good enough. You feel like Jesus. you're less than. You feel like you're lower than. You had words spoken against you that were lies from the enemy and the enemy has been lying to you and trying to get you to be afraid to step into your future, step afraid to step into your calling, afraid to step into to your like purpose and uh, causing like you to make excuses because um, he doesn't want you to step in and so he's, he's afraid of you stepping in and he's trying to make you be afraid to step in or try to hold on to to doctrines and things you've learned before some as, as a couple of you right now by a couple i mean it's actually there's several of you actually right now that are dealing with being you're very intellectual and what's happened is you've idolized your intellect and, what, and because your intellect has been idolized, meaning that you've lifted up your intellect, say, I know God and I know this about God and this is how God moves and I can explain these things and I understand all this. And because of that, it's actually served as a restriction to you stepping into being a laborer. And actually yes. going forth to see the manifestation of what God has promised you. Some of the things, the reasons why right now and some of you and it's, it's teaching happening and, and the prophetic is happening at the same time. 
for those of you to just making sure you catch that. The prophetic right. is actually flowing, but it's also flowing with teaching right now. Right. That you see some of the restriction is because of the, the, the you your heart posture, because he's saying, hey, I have this for you. I want to do this for you. But you're like, I won't let these things go. And see, the things you will not let go as it was spoken of before. If you will not expose it before the light, but expose it before God and say, God, I'm dealing with ABC. The Holy Spirit is inside of you pointing these things out, spotlighting these things before you. And he's saying, give them to me so I can remove this from this house, from your temple. Your, t- your body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. He said, I want to remove this from you so that you remove the limitations are taken off of you. So that you can begin to move in the way so I can make you that laborer. So I can cause you to perceive the harvest. So I can cause you to to see what I have for you. So you can see the manifestation of the miracles and the signs and the wonders. And and some of you, you're dealing with heavy debt right now. But God is going to bless you and move in such a way. There's going to be earthquakes happening in the spirit realm for you. And you're going to see your debt get canceled. You're going to see money begin to appear. And you're going to see God begin to take care of your debt to set you free so you can begin to go forth. There's somebody, I don't know who you are you're watching you want to retire but you can't retire because of the debt that you're dealing with right now there's someone and you're past the retirement age but you can't retire because of the debt but god is saying he's going to move in such a way he's going to take that inferiority off of you he's going to take that shame off of you to make you feel like you're ashamed because of your heart of compassion you gave to people and you got burned and, and so therefore you're in debt but god is going to take that off of you so that you can begin to understand he's calling you to be a laborer and as you step forth he's going to set you free that debt's going to be taken care of. God is getting ready to move in your life. He's getting ready to, to begin to dust off those things that were of old, those things you thought were dead and gone, so that you can begin to see the reality of who you are and begin to open your mouth and speak. Some of you, you are prophets and you have not been prophesying. You have not been stepping into your calling. Some of you actually have dreams on a regular basis, but you're not journaling and writing them down. You're not stewarding what God has given you the way he wants you to steward it. Then that's a part of your laboring so that you can begin to go forth. This is wisdom he's releasing to you right now in the midst of the prophetic flow because he wants you to understand I need you to journal down what, what I'm giving you via dreams. I need you to be prepared for the visions and things that I'm giving you. You begin that some of you get knowings. I just have a knowing about something inside. I, I know this or I feel like I know this. What it is is God releasing his knowledge, the gift of knowledge in you to understand what he is doing and he wants you to write these things down because he's going to do these things but you have to treasure what he's giving you and some of you, the stewardship is the reason why you don't steward, you're not treasuring what he's doing in your life right now because you're so busy trying to get to where he's told you that you're going to go that you're missing out on actually entering into being a laborer right now and that's your restriction jesus so God is calling you forth. And he's saying, I'm breaking the restrictions off my people today. I'm breaking the restrictions off my body today. Some of you were saying it's because of a sickness, not realizing that your, your, the sickness is not the restriction. The lack of you willing to say yes is your restriction. And therefore, when you say yes to him, you're going to begin to walk into the process of your healing. And some of you are going to receive physical healing. Some of you are going to receive emotional healing. And some of you are going to receive mental healing. Because I'm seeing someone right now. It's, it's actually someone I'm seeing. And it actually, it's multiple people. It's like a mental loop I'm seeing happening. A cycle of thinking that's happening over and over like things keep replaying. Memories keep replaying in your mind over and over again. But God is going to break you free and set you free. When you Amen. Get, yes, you're going to see it come forth. And we're going to pray for you. And this grace is going to be released upon you. And you're going to enter into this today. Let me, let me, let me. <laughs> Amen. Let me read this in um, uh, Matthew chapter 10, right after verse 38 in chapter 9 which uh, came after the verse that we hung our hat on. Um, It says here, And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, again, proximity, called called them to himself. They had been walking with him. And there came a time where he said, Come here, I'm now going to release upon your life what has been on mine so that you can labor with me. He had just talked to them about being laborers. And then he anointed them to be laborers and it says here he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease and there is power that he is releasing unto men and women in this day and time to do the exact same thing but it requires that we understand the need to be the laborers he would have us to be, not to do ministry as we've seen it done necessarily, not to simply be a reproduction 
of the type of spirituality or traditional expression of religion that we've seen before us, even if it seemed to be successful. But literally to come into close proximity where he can lay upon us what is upon him for such a time as this. So we can be extensions of heaven invading earth. And so that same anointing is here now to cast out devils, to heal the sick. And I want you to know, some of you have been waiting and saying, I just wish someone would release me. Hallelujah. That's what came to me as the man of God was ministering and prophesying. The Lord said, release them. You've been saying, God, I just wish someone would release me, would set me free from this. And I'm here to say as a prophet of God, you are released in the name of Jesus. I release you in the name of Jesus. I release you in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus and walk in your release. Let the sensation of freedom flood their souls, flood their minds. Let it rest upon them tangibly. Let them feel your presence, Lord God. Quicken their soul. Hallelujah. Ignite their heart in the name of Jesus. Replace that stony heart with a heart of flesh as you prophesied through Ezekiel in Jesus' name. By the blood of the lamb, let them be released, released. And the Lord says for some of you, he's crowning you with glory. But your true freedom will come when you cast the crown that others have put on your head before his foot. No longer will you accept glory, says the Lord. No longer will you slip up and begin to believe that you did such and such. That it's because of your intelligence. That it's because of your strategizing. That it's because of your planning. No longer will you receive credit for your success whether it be spoken or held in private. The Lord says, you will live for my glory. You will declare my glory. You will point others to the Jesus who saved you and delivered you. You will open your mouth in Jesus' name and declare my name before the masses in Jesus' name. Now, Father, release upon these people that oil, that oil, in the name of Jesus, to bring in harvest. And what I'm hearing is just oil of joy. This is an oil of joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is an oil of joy. And you will literally attract people into the kingdom through the joy that you are about to move in, in this freedom that God is releasing you into. And this new knowledge this revelatory insight and understanding, knowing that you have been positioned as a laborer to do work that is pleasing unto God, reflective of God, and hand in hand with God. The Lord says, I am making you a multiplier and I am releasing an army unto the nations to do the true ministry of laborer. And you have been called into this fold in Jesus' name. Receive it, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, let every shackle and chain of bondage that would hinder them from walking in full freedom, let it be broken and fall to the ground in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb. My brother, if there be any else, anything else on your heart, please release it. Oh, Father, wow. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare Jesus. Mm, Jesus. the release right now of harvest right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. The release of this harvest, the release of the harvest, I decree and declare it. But Lord, I also, Lord, I, I speak and decree and declare the release of healing. Thank you. Right now. Thank you. Healing mentally, Thank you. Thank emotionally, you. 
Amen. physically right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And I even I sense that also there are some of you that have been spiritually abused. Jesus. You've been, you've been sitting under leadership that has spiritually abused you and, 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 and you're about to be set free right now with the name of Jesus. I decree and declare be free in Jesus name. In Jesus name. And Father, I, I, I also pray for realignment. That every single person that needs to be realigned, that needs to be in a, under a different leadership, a My different God. house, that Father, you would release them now and give them wisdom and understanding to enter into this new place. That there'll be realignment, that they can grow. Some of you have been sitting in the same place and you have not been growing because you, he's been calling you to move and you have not moved where he's called you to move to. But he's calling you to go, to go forth. He's with you. He's answering you. He's leading you. And he's going to lead your family. He's going to lead your family. And you're going to be exactly where you're supposed to be. You have not missed it. You are not behind schedule. You are right on time. You do not have to be, oh, did I, did I miss it? Did I, oh, oh, I don't, oh, I always, no, no regrets. Because you are about to see an acceleration in your life that you've been waiting to see. And you're about to see the manifestation of miracle after miracle begin to happen in your life. And he, and also do not forsake the natural signs that are before you. My God. Because there are natural signs that have that are spiritual indicators. They yes. going to show you what is happening in the realm of the spirit through things that are happening naturally. Yes. And you are going to enter into great harvest and he is going to give you great favor. And if some of you, I hear him saying, thank you. Amen. Some of you have been faithful. You've, you've been tried. You've been tested. You've gone through and you are about to enter into a place. And he's saying thank you to you, but you are about to enter into a place of thanksgiving. You are about to give thanks because of the things you've been waiting for are about to begin to manifest in your life. And you are about to just have such great joy, such great peace and laughter that's about to come forth. But also with this, understand there is a there is a call upon you. He's calling unto you to say, be a steward of what I'm giving you. My God. Be a faithful steward of, of what I've given you. Because this is only the beginning. There's so much more after this. So do not settle. Do not stop. Do not labor until. Because we do not labor until a miracle happens. Mm -hmm. We labor until our king comes. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. And, and the favor piece, I just decree favor over the lives of those who are uh, partaking of this broadcast. Yes. I can just hear the Lord saying favor. My brother uh, spoke it out as well. Just like I can just I can just sense the tremendous favor of God just falling upon your life yes. in the name of Jesus. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other things that I would like to say, but I can just sense that. This is where the Lord wanted to land. Hallelujah. This is where he wanted us to land. And if you look around, we are not where we took off from. You have landed on another level in a higher plane of understanding and insight. And when I say higher plane, again, because of the day and time we're living in, I just want to specify, I'm not talking about astral planes and new age mumbo jumbo, which is a bunch of garbage and demonic uh, uh, trickery. I'm talking about a higher dimension of uh, Holy Ghost, uh, biblical, uh, revelatory, uh, worshipful understanding and experience where the Lord is about to take you on a new adventure with him. And he is going to do things before your eyes. He is going to do things through your hands and he is going to do things for you that you could never have imagined or asked for. God wants to pack your entire mainframe and use you to do things you never could have imagined. And he is going to show you things that leave you in a holy state of awe. Glory to God. And some of you are going to unlearn ways of viewing God that have hindered you from experiencing him as you ought to have experienced him from long ago. The, I, I can sense in the lives of some of you 
that when you were younger, you had a childlike faith, but life and religion robbed you of it. You, you used to have this big, beautiful, luminous view of God. Anything was possible. He was exciting and fun and he was uh, um, magnificent. It, it, just the thought of him excited you. But, but, but life was life in right? And, 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 and you got carried away into this state of, 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 uh, of a relationship with him that is only a shell of what it once was. And, and God says, yes, you, you have grown in your knowledge of scripture. You, you have grown in uh, 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 your, your theological understanding. But you are about to start, hallelujah, spiritually in terms of your faith, your childlike faith, you're about to start growing back down. What do I mean, right? We are supposed to approach him as a little child. Daddy, what's next? Daddy, what do you have for me? Ooh, daddy, what's that? Daddy, talk to me about this. The Lord wants you to rest in him with a childlike faith and allow him to blow your mind with the way that he moves mountains so that you can experience the most of him as hallelujah as he has intended for you to know him since the foundation before the foundation of the world this is your inheritance glory to god this is your kingdom heritage thank you guys so much for participating in this interview uh, my brother, Prophet Nick, man, oh man, thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you. You know, we're going to bring you back on. When I say we, we talking about me and the Holy Ghost, <laughs> right? Uh, we're going we gonna to bring you back on. Um, and, and the spirit of God, I know will we'll do great things through you then as well. I do want you to just drop some, uh, some information about how people can uh, um, connect with you and uh, your prophetic ministry, um, your music ministry, uh, and, and, and where they can uh, connect with you, even if they happen to stay in your um, geographical vicinity. Uh, just just drop your, your, your details on us. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. You know, it's, it's been an honor and a privilege to, to be a part and to be here. You know, and to know that he's in the midst. So thank you so much. Um, as far as uh, communicate, I'll, I'll start with the, uh, the the back end. So physically, uh, we, I, of course, I'm located. Well, I'll start with my church. You can find me at, at in Durham, North Carolina at the House of Prayer Ministries International. It is 3329 Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard, Suite 100. And in Durham, North Carolina, uh, you definitely can find us there. Service times on Sunday are at 1030 a.m. We start right on time. You know how that goes. Yeah. Um, and then um, right now we're also in home groups, but we, we also have home group at the church at uh, 7 p.m. And we also have them um, there in various locations. But you can also uh, go to the THOP Ministries org and you can begin to look at there and see where the various home groups are located and more information about the ministry. Now, um, shout out to Pastor Ray and Pastor Alice Smith. Yes. Yes, shout out to Pastor Ray, Pastor Alice Smith. Thank you for, for brother. Like, uh, they have been stewarding this house uh, right now. We're about to go throughout our 12 year anniversary. So, praise God for uh, what he has done. Um, so, we also now, as far as myself, I also just, of course, re uh, released a single, uh, which is called It's Interesting. God had me to release a, um, a love ballad called Lay It Down for Love based out of Ephesians. But yeah, it's, it's basically out of the uh, book of Ephesians where it says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And so right. he gave me the, uh, the entire ballot. And my brother here, uh, Prophet, Prophet Jason, was the producer, which was such a blessing. It was our first time getting a chance to really work together. And the Lord just did a marvelous work uh, in the midst of that. But it's called Lay It Down for Love. The video is available um, through YouTube and, uh, and various outlets. Also, the, the uh, single itself, you can go to Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, where you want to go YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, it's uh, available. So praise God. You yes. can reach out to me. Um, my Instagram um, is uh, the official Lathan um, on TikTok, official Lathan. 
and Facebook, we're, uh, we're also, it's the artist Lathan, but if you just type in the official Lathan as well, it will pop up either way. So nice. praise God, please reach out. This is where the music ministry is happening. But for me, you know, the prophetic is, is in every area of my life. So music, yep. uh, whatever type of arts it is, the prophetic is flowing. So please connect or uh, praise God. You know, I'm going to start posting more likely. I'd love to have uh, do a podcast with my brother as well. Maybe I bring him yep. on. Yep. And uh, this talk from the musical perspective, but also from other uh, whatever perspective the Holy Spirit is leading us. So please connect. Absolutely. Uh, love, to, love to talk with you. For sure. Um, well, listen, I, I, I want you to go ahead and close us out uh, with prayer. Uh, I'll give you the last word and uh, 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 call down heaven, brother, and uh, we'll call it a night. Father, thank you so much. We love you. We give you glory. Lord Jesus, we magnify you. Holy Spirit, we reverence you. Holy Spirit, I ask you right now that you would move in the midst right now. Touch your people, saturate your people, and cause the rivers to come forth and flow forth from their bellies in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Lord, that you would call forth the release of angels, angelic assistance to go forth for your people, to begin to bring them right into the, their divine positioning, the positioning that you've called them to operate and walk in, that they will be at the right place at the right time at the right moment, Lord, and it will continuously happen. I pray that the fruit will abound in our lives. I ask for wisdom and understanding to come upon the people now in the name of Jesus. Peace. I pray for knowledge, Lord, to come upon your people now in the name of Jesus. I pray for encounters to happen in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that in any area of their life where there has been hidden, that the light would shine and that you would begin to move in them and free them to run, Lord, that they will run for you, Lord. I pray right now for breakthrough to come forth right now, breakthrough to happen right right now with the name of Jesus for your people. Thank you, Lord, for their protection. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance. And thank you for this season, Lord, and that in the midst of what appears to be turmoil, you are bringing forth celebration. We Jesus. bless you for the celebration that's coming forth in the midst of the turmoil that's happening over the next few months, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise for this, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for tuning in to Napalm Springs episode nine. Are you a laborer? And we are speaking over your life that if you ain't, you're about to be. And if you if you if you got the faith to believe, not only are you about to be, we declare over you that you are a laborer in the name of Jesus. Go forth in this thy might, and we leave you in the counsel and care of the Holy Ghost. We look forward to seeing you reach your utmost stature in Christ and potential. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. God. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. J Jesus is still on the throne. For such a time as this.